Welcome to the How Did Show, where interesting people answer the questions, how did I get here? And how in the hell did I get here? With your host, Donovan Cornitz. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the How Did Show. My name is Donovan Cornitz. I am your host. And today we have the illustrious, the wonderful, my buddy that you've seen all over ESPN, doing sports center damn near every single day telling you all about the coolest stuff in sports my friend jay harris jay welcome to the show how are you doing i'm good you start using words like illustrious i'm looking around thinking somebody else is in this meeting except yeah, for they, you and me they left but it was still in the script so i had to i still had to use it <laughs> you you funny you ever get a paper a paper cut on your hand i have yes i have like not fun I put hand sanitizer. Be oh. safe. Hand sanitizer today. And I'm like, why is my hand burning? It's like right here. I can see it. I mean, that's neither here nor there. I just looked down and I saw it and I figured I, I wanted to share. You know what? It needs to be said that paper cuts, COVID, like it's all right up there with some of the worst problems we've got going on. Absolutely. Hopefully your hand heals up really quickly and stay away from envelopes and legal pads for the next like 24 to 48 hours until you heal up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, um, again, welcome to the show. Other than your hand, hope you've been doing well. It's been great kind of seeing you all over TV, ESPN, all that good stuff. I would like to know the first part of the How Did Show is how did you get where you are today? You have the floor. When you say where I am today, like in my house, I open the door. Specifically in, in that in. chair right now. Ah, uh, okay. So in was. your career as a long time uh, uh -huh. anchor on Sports Center on ESPN, doing your thing oh, at a very high you level, mean the career how did you story? get there? Yeah, the career the story. Career. I think that's what people oh, are oh, oh. They don't I really care about you. your chair. You. Yeah. It's a nice chair though. It's a really nice it looks chair. Really nice. Zero gravity massage chairs. It's really like you're floating. Yes. Yeah. Do you have the massage on right now to like relax you through this interview? I do not. I do not. I'm just it, saying. It would, it would lay me back. I put the massage on. It would just lay, it would lay me back, and I'd be like this. That's a whole other show. I don't need you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so from like what you used to do, what your original plans or dreams okay. were, and then right. how did you All get right. to where you are now, career wise? Forget the damn chair. Okay, I will go back from the beginning. I started in radio. Uh, I always wanted to be a journalist um, from one of those. I took a career aptitude test in the 11th grade, and I scored well in the area of interpersonal skills. I remember skills. those. Yes. And I looked at the jobs, and I think the third job down was journalist, and I said, that's what I'll be. So um, fast forward through college, trying to get a job, couldn't get a job, deciding that this wasn't for me. I'm going back to grad school. Grad school says, no, you're not coming here because we don't really want you. You need to go back out there in the job market and try That's harder. Rough. So I did that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was rough. It was rough. And um, a friend of mine gave me an opportunity at his, he was news director at this uh, small AM radio station in Portsmouth, Virginia, small news team. And I called him up and I said, um, this is me from college, from Old Dominion and where I met you and you're doing what I want to do. Can you help a brother out? And he said, I can give you plenty of experience, but I can't pay you any money. So I was working in D.C. at the time at MCI uh, Telecommunications okay. Customer Service. $16,000 a year I think I was making. So I talked it over with my parents and I said, I know zero is less than 16, but I want to do this and I want to do that. And they said, OK, we'll spot you for a minute. OK, give it a try. So that started working for free. And eventually he found a little money in the budget and uh, that opportunity led to an opportunity doing uh, news on the FM side in the morning. That opportunity led to an opportunity in Pittsburgh that I applied for um, being a local news anchor on uh, WAMO radio, the flagship station for the Sheridan Broadcasting Network, All right. uh, later to be known as the American Urban Radio Networks. So I did local news for three years. I did national news for three years, all on the radio. Okay. Um, in the interim, 
I did some part-time TV, just overnight news updates. So at one point I was working seven days a week, like every other weekend. The hustle um, was real. Yeah, seriously, seriously. <laughs> um, so then the WPGH, the Fox 53 10 o'clock news came into the market and I knew the executive producer from radio and I bugged him for a spot. And he's like, no, oh man, no, you don't have any appreciable TV experience. Uh, so no. A lot of no's one weekend, so he far. Knew, a lot of no's, a lot of no's. Um, one weekend, his weekend reporter uh, just bounced for family reasons and he needed someone. So he said, I'll, I'll hire you on a temporary basis until I can get somebody in here with some more experience. So first weekend, they made me put everything on tape. Next weekend, they let me go live. Three months later, after being temporary, they said, hey, you want to work here full time? Boom. So I said, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> So I was still doing radio during this. So I kind of did the flip flop. I did from radio full time to TV part time. I did TV full time, radio part time. Okay. And in the five years I was uh, at WPGH, I started as a um, general assignment reporter for a year, then weekend anchor for a year, and then main anchor for three years. And uh, it was then that I sent a tape to a former boss of mine at the radio network, who was now at ESPN Radio. Uh, who had moved okay. to the area of recruitment. I didn't know it, um, but I just sent him a tape because I trusted his eye and I wanted him to critique me because it was at the end of my contract and I was going to start looking for jobs. And he showed it to some folks at ESPN and they liked me. And then he called me up and said, hey, why don't you come up for an audition? Because they really like you. And I said, they really like what? They like, really like your tape. I said, what tape? The tape you sent me. Why'd you show them my tape? I don't want to go work at ESPN. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in the news thing. All this is news up to now. And my wife's like, you watch ESPN all the time anyway. Why don't you just go? Don't the wives Whatever. always know? The ladies, they, yes. they just know. Meddling. Meddling. That's what they do. They meddle. <laughs> anyway. anyway. You said that, not me. So... For the record. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the door is closed. Anyway. <laughs> So I went up and did the audition and I guess they liked me and we went through a couple of rounds of back and forth with my buddy saying they really like you. And I'm like, well, I don't I don't really want to work there. I want to do news. And I actually told him no a couple of times because it really wasn't something I was looking for. Right. Um, you know, my wife called him and said, hey, is this a good opportunity for Jay? He's like, I really think it is. She said, OK, I'll take care of it. OK, bye bye. <laughs> um, Undercover work. OK. And, yeah, it was, it was really funny. It's really funny. So to make a to make a long story, because there's more detail, but I'll stop it there. Okay. Um, I, I made a decision to, to go and went to bed that night and woke up the next morning and saying, I'm not going to go. And I, I got that look that that <laughs> women always give men when women know that we about to do something stupid. But we don't have any idea that we about to do something. Stupid. I know the look well. Got the legal pad out, line down the middle pros and cons and the Disney benefits alone made it uh, the best decision that she ever made 18 years ago. Cause I'm still here. I'd, yeah. I'd, Cause I'd have messed it up. That's we tend to do that fellas. We, uh, we tend to mess up opportunities, chances. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad that your wife took the precedence and uh, took the initiative and went behind your back so that you could. Uh, yes. Be who you are now. Yeah. Cause we, we, we think locally, they, they think globally. I mean, I, I see news and sports and she sees journalism. She sees you big dummy. You tell stories here in Pittsburgh. You'll tell the same stories there in, in Bristol. You'll just tell it from a sports, sports, per, sports purview yeah. instead of news. You big sure. dummy. And I'm like, oh, OK, I guess you're right. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll try yeah, it. Thanks that's how me. I got here. Well, yeah. that is amazing. And I think it's really important to to really point out, one, that you got told no a bunch of times over the course of the journey. Um, two, you had to take a couple of steps back in order to take steps forward later, right? Going from your your very, very impressive 16K a year uh, down, to, <laughs> <laughs> down to zero, but it was for the opportunity to do something you were passionate about, something you really wanted to pursue um, and it was definitely, obviously it was worth it. And then when you get that opportunity, you make the most of it, you, you shine in that. And you went from this part-time temp thing to being a, a lead anchor. I mean, 
if you know anything about news people like that's a big deal to be the lead anchor um and to start on a temp basis to that is great and then i think also another really great lesson from that is to take the initiative knowing that your contract was coming up you started to put some feelers out there even though none of the feelers were for espn um but you started to kind of prepare just in case right um and then having some i use my network people of people that i trust absolutely i was gonna yeah. say you have people in your corner that you trusted and even people that you know were rooting for you and going for you even when you <laughs> weren't going for yourself in the same uh yeah. in the same level um submitting your tape do you do you think that that friend at espn when they like did he ask for your tape or did you just offer it to him and then he kind of just said you know what i got this tape I'm going to send it. Or what do you think he was intentional with it? Like, Hey, send me a tape. Let me just check it. No, no, no. I, I called him up. I said, would you watch this? Would you look at this for me? Cause I want you to critique it. And he said, okay, send it. And when he got it and I guess he, he liked, liked it, it and that's, that's when he decided it. to show it off to the to friend the wife in your corner. And then you had to get there and, and, and do your thing to maintain it. So what would you say is the biggest key that's kept you there, you know, from getting the opportunity to maintaining your success at such a huge popular network with so many people are trying to get there i would imagine there are people banging on the door trying to get on the air as an anchor on sports center or just an espn in any capacity what have you done or what has been the key to keep you there i got pictures of everybody donovan i mean i have I got, you got all the dirt okay. all the tea <laughs> you know where all the bodies are buried <laughs> i like it there's a go another lesson <laughs> Get dirt on everybody important <laughs> in the company. <laughs> now you know what I, you know what I've done. I, I think uh, because you're not the first person to ask me that question. I listen a lot, uh, and I try not to make things about me. And every time I drive onto the campus and I see those four letters up on the building, they still mean something to me because nice. they mean so much to so many other people. I mean, we've had tours go through there like when the the little league world series that they have the regionals here in bristol uh every year and the teams come through and to see the little kids get excited about you know walking onto the set is cool but when you see their parents yeah. the adults get excited and you're like this thing this thing has been here something. for a minute yeah. and it means means a lot to a lot of people so I really appreciate that. So that makes me not take it for granted. And every day is a new day. And every day is I try to be better than the day before. Absolutely. I keep it yeah. simple. Yeah. And I think uh, I think we've talked about this before, is that you've been comfortable in who you are, your personality, what you bring. You didn't try to be some big over the top, you know, just try and stay relevant or, you know, kind of uh, push the envelope. It's like, you know, your lane, you know who you are, you know what you're really, really good at. And of course, yeah, you can be silly here, there and and kind of play around with it. But that's still all within the realm of who you are. And like you said, you kept it simple and you kept it real, meaning you 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 were yourself through the whole process. And as things changed, as media changed, right, with, with all the stuff, social media and all that, there's no there's no Jay Harris scandals going on, on at least not not that I know about. We'll find out later and see if this episode actually makes it to uh, <laughs> we find anything. The, the private eye we've uh, we've assigned to the case. But no, it, it's it's really refreshing that, you know, in such a cutthroat industry, like we're both in the entertainment industry, obviously different realms of it, but it can be really cutthroat and people will do almost anything to get noticed, to get ahead, to get notoriety. Um, or they say like, you know, any publicity mm -hmm. is good publicity, publicity. And you have right been able to stand on just your skill like you're really good at what you do and that's your lane and i think that's pl Thank also you. played a really huge role in it and uh yeah it's it's been great to to kind of i've all, i've noticed you before we were friends and since then i've been really proud of seeing that you've maintained it and still growing with the network with all the the new faces coming in you're still a staple there so kudos to you Great job. Well, thank you. I mean, the late, great Stuart Scott told me one time, gave me the best advice anyone's ever given me. He said, do you. That's it. Because the only you there is. Do you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I that's, can do was that. the famous quote. It's like, uh, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. So, yeah. 
That's a good one. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Might as well just be who you are. Well, cool. Thank you so much. That's a really great, really inspiring story. It also gives some really great, uh, some hints on what people can do to be successful in whatever it is they want to do, right? The the lessons of sticking with it and being true to yourself. I mean, that applies to pretty much any industry. So yeah, I, I yes. think that was awesome. So now we have the next phase of this. And this is the, the Wheel, Wheel of What? Where I'm going to spin this great wheel behind me and all of them. Oh, that's what that thing is. That's what this is back here. If you were wondering, I'm going to spin right. it and whatever it lands on, we need an honest, truthful answer. All right. You ready? Let's do this thing. Yeah. All right. Let's bring this in. And I actually like. I can't believe I actually found this. Like, you can buy anything online. So let's see how this goes. Are you ready? Web crush. What's the other one? I was reading. Uh, now I can't read them. No. Nope. All right. Spinning so, it. right here. Whoops. Blank. It was on right here. Yeah. And that landed that? on <laughs> my it's, favorite. It, green magic marker? Yeah. It will work on that. It's chicken horse. And what? Chicken horse. Chicken horse. Chicken horse. Is I'm so glad you landed on this because it's a ridiculous question. And who better to ask a ridiculous question than my buddy Jay? So the uh -huh. question is, you absolutely have to fight for your life to survive. But right. you can choose. You either have to take on two horse-sized chickens or 50 chicken-sized horses. Which would you choose and why? Two horse? How large are the horses? You know what? I let's go for it. Let's go for the gusto. They're Clydesdale chickens. <laughs> ah, Clydesdale chickens or 50. I'm taking the 50 horses. The 50 horses that are the size of chickens. Yeah. Why is that? Why would you take that? Because I grew up on a farm. Well, okay. next to my grandparents' farm. And, and my grandparents had this rooster. And roosters are very protective. Roosters also are crazy. Yes, they are. So I would get off the bus in the afternoon and the rooster would be like, hey, there. Uh oh, you froze on me again. Right at a really good part of the story, too. Hold on. Let's see. Where are you back? Rooster would. <laughs> let's see. There you are. All right, now, now you're back. There you are. We'll fix it in post. Okay. All right. So tell me about this rooster. So I would get off the bus in the afternoon and, and the rooster. All right. I would get off the school bus in the afternoon and the rooster would be like, yep, there he is. I'm going to get him. And he would like chase me. And I was, I was scared of the rooster. So I put rocks in my coat pocket and I would throw rocks at the rooster. And the rooster's like, oh, he's got rocks. Let me get out of here. And one day my grandparents saw it and were like, stop throwing rocks at that rooster. <laughs> and like, the rooster's chasing me. What the, what, the, what the rooster's supposed to do? It's like, yeah. not me. It's supposed yeah. to chase chickens, not me. Like, why are y'all yeah. siding with the rooster? I'm your grandchild. I live here. I'm the more important person than a rooster. <laughs> apparently exactly. not. Exactly. So, um, no, apparently not. <laughs> but two horse size, I can't, I, I can't deal with two horse size <laughs> chickens because it made me think that the, the rooster, they're too big. Rocks ain't so gonna I work. Take the rocks ain't gonna work on horse sized chickens, man. No, no, no. I so I take the fifty uh chicken sized horses and I would just I'd just take my chances with take 50, your chances. With I them. could just kick them. Yeah, I think you could probably get like a good 20, 25 of them before it really starts to get difficult. And then after a while, you really have to give it all you got to survive. Yes, yes. <laughs> See, excellent question. That, that's really a good answer. Kettle. <laughs> it's ridiculous look this was a completely random uh choice here i had nothing to do with it but i'm so glad that but look it led to another great story about how you became who you are you were throwing rocks at roosters listen uh animal yes. rights people the statute of limitations <laughs> and throwing rocks at uh roosters has been up a long time so no roosters were harmed in the taping of this episode um all right so now yeah. My fourth grade teacher got mad at me because I had rockets. I had uh, rocks in my pocket. I was like, why do you have rocks in school? I said, they're not for anybody in school. They're for this rooster that chases me when I get off the bus. This like, rooster. 
Sure, Jay. Sure. That's why it's like uh, the counselor was paying a little extra attention to you. <laughs> yeah, this is the kid with rocks in his pocket I told you about. <laughs> it's a rooster. <laughs> he sees roosters. <laughs> yeah, he, he sees. <laughs> I see roosters. Um, yeah, exactly. No, that's not weird at all. But <laughs> now we come to the second half of the How Did Show. And I'm really, I, I promise you, everyone out there, I do not know this story ahead of time. So I'm really excited about this. So I want to ask you, the other part of how did I get here would be how the hell did I get here? And this would be a story in your life at some point where you were somewhere outside of your comfort zone or a situation you would never normally be in. Doesn't have to be a bad one. But something where you looked around, you're like, I have no idea how I ended up in this situation. And chances are, I hope I never end up in this again. If it's a, you know, if it's a, a bad situation. So what can you say in your life was a situation where you had to tell yourself, Jay, how the hell did I get here? Hmm. It's an interesting question. Don't incriminate yourself, by the way. Uh, no, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I'm, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm trying to think if there was probably, probably the only situation that I can, I can, I can fit into what you're asking um, is when I decided that I was going to pledge Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. All right, A five. And it was, I, you know, I had no concept of of anything about fraternities and sororities. I just met these brothers and they seem real cool and had some really, really cool guys in the history of the organization. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like something I'd love to be a part of. So we went through the whole process and we're, okay, we're going to start tomorrow night. So just be at such and such place at tomorrow night. And we're going to, we're going to begin this whole process. I'm like, it's sweet. This is going to be great. It's going to be swell. Going to be swell. Okie doke. And the two guys I was with were like, yeah, we're going to do this thing. And we're going to, going to be alphas and, and, and it's going to be great. And so we get there and it, it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't anything. great. It wasn't anything like I thought it would be. <laughs> and, and this was what, this was 1984. So I'm okay. sure things changed the, a, a tad bit since then. Um, yeah. But there are new was, laws in place. <laughs> 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 and it, it was, it was, it was an experience, but you know what? I, I, it was something I wanted to do. So I'm like, I just, you know, it's not that bad. So just, you know, as my old JV basketball coach used to say, just suck it up and play. Yeah. So I just sucked it up and, you know, we, we did it in six weeks, and 17 hours and 42 minutes and seven seconds later, we were good. We we're in. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. But that's probably the one situation I was like, how the hell did I get into this? What, but, you know, are there any details about that first night that you can give without incriminating yourself or any other of your brothers? Your no, brothers? <laughs> uh, I think I blocked. I, bl I think I blocked a lot of it out. To be honest with you. Um, that bad. huh? Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. It was interesting. <laughs> but you know what? I kind of I kind of equate it to my first night at ESPN doing ESPN news. We don't have ESPN news anymore. And right. I wish we did because it was a it was a heck of a training ground and an opportunity to just do stuff on the fly. Um, like the show would start before the show would even start. The producer would get in your ear and it's like, all right, we're going to move B3 through B7 up to the A's and A13 through 19. Going to move it down to the C's and we're going to start with C1 through three and then you're gonna have an interview with such and such and i'm like i don't even know what you say yeah i don't even know what this b stuff is but hey yeah action <laughs> and <laughs> pretty much and the the first night it was so fast the games would end and the shot sheet would come across your desk and i haven't seen this game i've been talking for an hour and the game just ended and i have to i have to do the highlight and i don't know this guy's pronunciation i don't know how to, how you say his name and the yeah. research is sitting right here and slide your card with all these notes on it and you have to look at the paper and the video and the notes and you have to try and weave it all into a story and I, it was a three-hour show and i walked off the set that night and it's like my butt was on fire. <laughs> I did want to, I, whew, I, it was, 
<laughs> it was a mess. Wow. It was horrible. But well, um, you stuck around. You stuck with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's that. something about like live events, live TV that just if you if you can handle it and if you're into that, the pressure and like the excitement that comes with it, it's kind of intoxicating. Um, it is. Now it's which, fun. Yeah, it's fun because you're like, you know what? What's going to happen now? Absolutely. <laughs> it, ha- we, it happened. It happened today. We were doing it. We're doing an interview, a talk back with somebody and and the sound just went out. And we're like, OK. I guess we're going to have to take a, a commercial break and come back and try this again. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. This is fun now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, and we actually met during a well, because of a live event. Um, not to get too much into our history, but it's kind of uh, another story of kind of how like fate happens or whatever. But um, we met uh, during an award show at my alma mater, NC State, who we're back. Um, you can see that behind you. There's a lot of yeah. Oh yeah, there's there's a few pieces of paraphernalia around here and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, in case anybody was curious where my allegiances lie. Um, But yes, and so I was hired as the voice of God announcer for this award show. And Jay was hired as the host, the MC of it. And usually the organizers, the producers of the the award show um, have people to kind of escort the host from the airport to the hotel, from the hotel to the venue and back and forth and all that stuff. Um, But during this time, I was already there. The producer said to me, like, hey, the guy who's supposed to be like handling our host is sick. And the only other person that we have as a backup is helping me with the show. So do you think you can take our host like from the hotel? Because you guys are in the same hotel. Can you bring him to the venue for uh, for the rehearsal and then later for the show as well? I was like, uh, yeah, fine. I had a rental car. Like, sure. And I'm like, well, who is it? It's like, oh, it's Jay Harris. I'm like, why does that name sound familiar? It's like Sports Center. I was like, oh, snap, cool. And uh, (laughs) if you remember, we kind of, she gave me a number so we could text and I could let you know that I was going to be the guy uh, driving you to the venue. I was the the voice of God for this show. And (laughs) right as soon as you came off the elevator, I was waiting in the lobby for you right off the bat it was like jokes and just like silly and we've been cool ever since (laughs) like chatting and it was all because the person who was supposed to take you was sick and couldn't do it and i was already there so um it kind of all worked out Mm -hmm. from that point and that was during a live event where some stuff had to change last minute and things with me scripts change oh this person isn't here you can't say their name you got to go to the skip him go to the next person um and it's happening in real time with people listening to you mess up if you do um so yeah i I know all about that and i kind of i kind of love it i kind of love the 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 craziness that comes with with doing something live and so i know you that's got to be like second nature for you now like it would be weird to have stuff (laughs) pre-recorded Yeah, I don't really like to. I'd, I'd rather just do it live if if we can. I know we record some things, the pre-show tease or maybe an interview yeah, with yeah. somebody can't be there live for the show. And I, that's fine. But yeah, if we could do it live, let's just do it live. And if we mess up, well, who cares? Yeah, it's real. People are still going to watch. Absolutely. Jay mispronounced the word. This is bull. I'm changing. It. <laughs> Never going to happen. Never. It would tune out a lot if that was a prerequisite. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. contract would not be renewed <laughs> uh, like it is oh well jay thank you so much for your time thank you so much for being on the how did show um i really truly appreciate it um i know your time is very valuable um so i i definitely appreciate it and thanks for just being a friend and and a buddy that we can you know we talk offline all the time so thank you again for being at great stories um at some point I'm I'm gonna get one of those. I'm gonna get one of those alpha stories out of you. Not on, oh, I thought not you were gonna record, say at though. some point you're gonna send me a check for doing this. Oh <laughs> man, the connection. <laughs> oh, you're frozen again. Yeah, that's, that's very good. That's check. Fun. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that <laughs> about it later. But anyway, thank you so much. Have a have a great evening, and uh, thanks again for being on the How Did Show. Thank you, bro. Peace.
What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me and having some fun as we interview some really, really interesting people. So go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and be on the lookout for more episodes of The How Did Show.